Hey travelers, it's LSD789 with another build video. This is going to be my Warden Challenger Perfect Parry Explosion with Melee build. It's a really fun build because each time you get hit you do a big explosion with status effects all around you. And each time you get hit you heal yourself. So yeah, it's really hard to die uh, with this build. But yeah, let's go right into it. For this I'm using the Crisis Core Amulet. You get this by playing the boss rush mode. Uh, when a single source of enemy uh, damage exceeds 15% of your max health, automatically trigger effects that require perfect dodge to activate and gain 50% damage reduction for 3 seconds but this can only happen uh, once every 3 seconds but I will show a little bit in the gameplay later how to, how to really use this but basically when you take more than 50% of your max health you trigger a perfect parry effect and we have some perfect parry rings on the build uh, for example the mark of the destroyer on perfect dodge trigger a 4.5 meter blast that deals 465 explosion damage so yeah once you get hit you do do a big explosion with 465 explosion damage. Yeah, this one's really good. Then with the feedback loop, on perfect dodge, trigger a 4.5 meter AOE blast that does 217 shock damage and applies overload, uh, which deals 249 shock damage uh, over 5 seconds. So yeah, we do explosion, we do elemental, and we have the burden of the audacious. Decrease all healing by 50% and on perfect dodge, heal 25% of your max health. So once we take 15% of our max health, we heal 25% of our max health. So we heal more than we actually take. But we do need to be careful with that 3 second uh, gap. Because that we can only trigger the necklace uh, every 3 seconds. But we're gonna heal each time, we do a lot of damage. And I have the burden of the destroyer on it. Decrease range of all firearms by 35% and increase all damage dealt by 15%. So yeah, because we do a lot of different types of damage, we do explosion damage, elemental damage, and we do melee damage with the half the side. I really like this burden of the destroyer that just increases everything by 15%. You can also try one of the other uh, dodge rings. There is a ring here which gives you melee damage and uh, one ring that gives you crit chance and crit damage. But yeah, I really like the just all damage because we do, uh, yeah, like I said, a lot of different types of uh, damage. Yeah, that one's really good. Those are all the items. Let's go over the weapons really quick. I'm using the Chicago typewriter. You can actually use any weapon you like for this build. You can use the Black Maw or even the Monolith with the Sandstorm ability. But I like the Chicago typewriter because there's a lot of ammo in the magazine. It also comes with the Heat Wave mod. Activating a 22.5 meter aura of sweltering heat, causing enemies inside the aura for 3 seconds to begin burning for 1200 fire damage over 5 seconds and it lasts 30 seconds. So yeah, we're just running up to an enemy and pop this mod and you do a lot of fire damage with it. It also comes with the pressure point uh, mutator, increases this weapon range and mod damage by 15% to enemies within 7 meters. And again, we want to be close to the enemies anyway, and this will just increase the damage from the heat wave by 15%. And activating this weapon mod triggers a fixed 7 meter blast, dealing 225 damage per 100 mod power spent in a single cast, and it inflicts stagger damage. So yeah, this mod does require a lot of uh, mod power, like 1,250. So yeah, that will increase the 225 damage by a lot. So yeah, I really like the heat wave plus the pressure points. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you can use any weapon you like. Then I have the halves side. This is a new melee weapon from the new DLC. And I will link a video in the description how to get this. But yeah, the halves side gets the phantom blade. Charged melee attacks release uh, a phantom that trails behind the host. Uh, dealing 35% of the half the side damage and each hit of the Phantom Blade increases the melee speed and the melee charge speed by 6% for 5 seconds and at max stacks uh, 5. So yeah, each time you charge attack you do a quicker charge attack and then I put the Shocker Mutator on it and powers the weapon after 3 hits while I'm powered the next charged melee attack strikes all enemies within 10 meters with 420 shock damage. And at level 10, the shock damage now applies overload, dealing 581 shock damage over 5 seconds. So I just want to be charge attacking the enemies and the bosses. And the more you charge attack it, the quicker it goes. And you shock all the enemies, doing more elemental damage. And it's really big AoE, so yeah, this one's really nice. You can also try the World's Edge or even the Red Bringer. But I, I really like the new weapon. Uh, and I will show a little bit uh, on how this works. Then I have the Nebula with the nano swarm again it doesn't really matter we're just popping our mods and then we go in melee but yeah the nebula gets the nano swarm and these are swarm of nano uh, machines that seek after enemies within 20 meters and repeatedly attack dealing 18 acid damage per hit and applying corroded for 
340 acid damage. And Corrode is really nice because if an enemy is corroded, he takes 10% damage from all sources. That includes melee, elemental, explosion, he just takes 10% more damage. That's why it's really nice. It also comes with a feedback uh, mutator. Using this weapon's mod generates 20% of a single charge value, passive mod power over 10 seconds, and it does not sack. So yeah, this will just get your nano swarm back quicker. And the mod generates 15% base damage dealt as uh, mod power. So yeah, those are all the weapons and the items. Let's go over the armor. Again, the armor doesn't really matter, just use whatever you like. But I want to be as high DR as I can, but not go over the weight limit. I'm using the True Crimson Crown. If you don't have this one, I will link a video in the description on how to get it. Then I have a Leto Mark II chest piece, Leto Mark I leggings, and Leto Mark II gloves, and that will get me exactly to 90. And also I have the Tranquil Heart. Passively grant 2 health regen per second, and unused double all health regen by fi uh, for 15 seconds. Yeah, this one's really nice, just for passive regen. You can also try the Profane Heart for the lifesteal, but I like the passive regen. Um, yeah, that's everything. Let's go over the archetypes. I'm using the Challenger as a primary, and as a primary you get a Die Hard Prime perk. When receiving fatal damage, the Challenger becomes invulnerable for 3 seconds and regenerates 100% of the max health. And while on cooldown, the Challenger grants, uh, gains one stack of Bulwark, but this can only happen once every 10 minutes, and it resets uh, at a world zone on that. So yeah, when you take fatal damage, you get fully healed. It's almost like a revive. So yeah, this one's really nice. As a prime, and you get some bulwark. Then for the skills, I'm using the Juggernaut. Become nearly unstoppable, gaining 3 stacks of bulwark, 15 movement speed, melee speed, and uh, reduced stamina cost. Increase melee damage by 50, and stagger, uh, level down, uh, and stagger level reduced by 1. So yeah, this one is amazing. You get a lot of bulwark, movement speed, melee speed. This uh, this everything we want for a melee build. And you can't be staggered uh, as much. Uh, this one's really good. Also, you get a close quarters damage perk. Quarters 35 increase all damage to enemies within 10 meters. And damage bonus tapers off until 20 meters. So if an enemy is more than 20 meters away, you don't do any damage. And you got also 5% crit chance. So yeah, we want to be close to enemies anyway. This build is mostly useful against melee bosses. Not so much against range bosses or shooting bosses. But mostly against melee bosses. I will show uh, a little bit in the gameplay what bosses I can fight with it. Then also you have the intimidating presence. Activating a challenger skill. Enemies within 22 meters deal 10% less damage for 15 seconds. Uh, with an additional 2.5 damage reduction per enemy at a max of 10. So yeah, just go close to an enemy, trigger your skill, and that's uh, how you get a lot of damage and uh, damage reduction. You get both the stamina cost increase uh, for each weight bracket, and stamina re regain delay are reduced by 50. So this will help with your stamina. Then also you get using a relic within 10 meters of an enemy, grants you two stacks of bulwark and 10 damage for 10 seconds. So yeah, you just want to be close to enemies, that's basically the challenge, you just go close. And of course with the strong back trait for increased dodge weight thresholds. Then as a secondary, you, uh, I'm using Warden. You can also use anything that gives you all damage, like the Alchemist or the the Medic. But I really like the new archetype, the Warden. Um, and I'm using the Healing Drone. For this build we don't really want shields, because we need to take 15% max uh, health damage. And if you shield it, it doesn't count towards your necklace uh, uh, working. Then you can also use a combat drone for some damage, but I like the healing drone that tops your health off uh, in case you need it. Uh, you get 25% all damage and 5% crit chance. The one drone grants you one stack of bulwark and decrease all healing effectiveness by 10%. This one is really good. The when the one on health drops below 25, gain a shield for 28% of the max health and last 10 seconds, but this can only happen once every 30 seconds and you get movement speed when this happens so yeah, we have a revive if we go down we get fully healed and this will kind of protect your revive so if your health goes, goes low first you use the shield on a 30 second cooldown and if you go lower than that then you will use the die hard perk but this will kind of protect your revive and this will come in handy really uh, really good and also you get the energized relic perk on relic use, grant a shield for 28% of the max health, but cannot stack with itself and last 10 seconds until shield is removed. So yeah, this one's also good. Uh, when you use a relic, you get a bit of shield. But yeah, those are the archetypes. 
the fragments for the fragments I use static effects, damage reduction, and explosion damage. Because of those two rings that I have on, I do a lot of shock damage and explosion damage, and a bit of damage reduction to top it off. Then also uh, the prism doesn't really matter. I will ma make a video later on how to really use the prisms. But yeah, these are the prism the fragments that I use. And for the traits, I'm using barrier for 15% uh, shield amount. This uh, trait is currently bugged in the game. Um, I'm level 10 Warden, and at level 10 you should be able to unlock all the archetype uh, traits. But when I switch away from the Warden, I lose this trait in this list. So this one's currently bugged. Uh, but yeah, you got 15 shield amounts. I have Fortify at level 10 for armor bonus. I have Figure at level 10 for the maximum health. I have Triage for the healing effectiveness. Swarm back for the weight thresholds. Regrowth for the passive regen. I have Spirit for the mod regeneration. Ample shoot for the AoE size. That's really good for the explosions and the shield for the status ring. Bark skin for the damage reduction. Siphoner for a li little bit of lifesteal. And I have Insight for the mod regen. This one you can, can get from Alepsis Tora. I will link a video in the description how to get this. Um, if you don't have the Tranquil Heart and you want to go the lifesteal route, you don't want to pick up Regrowth and Triage. You want to pick up Siphoner and Leech. But I like the passive regen better. But those are the choices you have. Then for the potions, you can use a Mutut's Tonic or you can use a, a Meat Shake for the damage reduction. And also this new potion in the game, the Mutut's Snake Oil, you can get from um, Narut in the new DLC. And you need to give the crop sample to Dwayne in War 13 and then talk with Mutut and you get this concoction. It's really nice. Wants a random concoction uh, effect, but uh, and ignores concoction limit, uh, and lasts for 60 seconds. So yeah, you just get a random concoction, but it does not count towards your limit. So you can see right now, I have two potions equipped, even though I don't have any uh, limit boosts. Uh, these are all the stats, by the way. Which I will show a little bit on how it works. I don't think I can really show it here, but I have some gameplay later on. So I yeah, just want to use your mod when you run in. Use this one, you're running, use your juggernaut, and then hold to charge. And you see, if multiple enemies are nearby, they all get hit. And I will now put in some boss fights, and you need to watch my health. And um, when my health goes low, I immediately heal to full. I do a big AoE blast for explosion damage and shock damage. And you just want to go melee after that. And the drone is there just to help you out. And I get my mods back already. Yeah, I hope you guys like the build. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. And yeah, LSD 789, out. <laughs> hey. Hello.
delectable delicacies, but you?
Lane have come this way? Uh, pretty sure that thing would be dead, if she did. Hi! Your timing is fortuitous. of your kind left me for dead. That is when they found me and offered me their enlightenment. Blind was I until they opened my eye to the lies of permanence. Oh, the feeble empress craves her freedom. Tries to guzzle immortality. But all things die, Cobb. Even gods. Theirs is a mastery of death. The all that is nothing. And so I offer the choice they offered, Cobb. Return to the ash from which we all came. Or break the yoke of balance and become eternal. But the bridge between ego and soul cannot be crossed without paying a toll.